What's going on guys? So in the day's video, we are going over the Apex 4 from Fly Diggity. This controller literally has it all for the most part. There's a couple areas it needs improvement on, but great controller if I have to say so right out of the gate. Fly Diggity did send this controller out for review, but as always, they're not telling me what to say. They didn't pay me because they wouldn't give me no money. And you guys are going to see it before they do. Let's hop into the video. We're excited to unbox it for you guys today. First thing in the box is definitely going to be your nylon braided cable. It's pretty nice. No dust covers or anything like that. You do get a 2.4 dongle, which is nice. It's got a high speed dongle. You do get a reset pin right there and some instruction manuals in Chinese and American. Here's a controller itself. Hey guys, we'll go ahead and talk about the cosmetics of the controller. Well, you see on what I see, you see a beautiful, gorgeous controller. You got the translucent front cover that, by the way, does come off with a little bit of uh, work, of course. Take some sticks and a uh, D-pad off to get this to come off, but it does come off. You get the rubber grips on the back right here. These rubber grips feel amazing to the touch, by the way. They feel almost like if I had to give it like an idea of what it felt like is like a elite series controller of the grips in the back. That's kind of what it feels like. Very high quality in my personal opinion. One of the other things on here, as you can see, is this big face with like a mirror looking thing. This is gonna be your display screen. It come up right there. And as you can see there, I have a special emote on there. That's my emote. You can upload emotes and I'll probably show you how to do that real quick when we get to the app settings. So if you wanna see that, make sure you give ahead of that. What I don't like about it is the, the, plate, the plate right here itself is you do get a lot of fingerprints on it. You can just kind of see them as I show you in the light and stuff. There's a lot of fingerprints and stuff coming up there. So where I do like the display and everything, I don't like the fingerprints. So I kind of wish there was something we could do there not to have fingerprints because this takes away from the controller overall. As you can see here, you have RGBs on the controller itself too. They kind of cycle through colors and stuff and they also switch depending on what mode you're in, D, X, input any of those types of things for Nintendo Switch or Android or anything like that. While we're speaking of that, let's go ahead and talk about that for a second. See if I can get it on screen for you guys and gals real quick. So you can legitimately come here and come to connect to A. You can see you have a slew of things you can um, connect this to, including you know, D input, X input, like I've talked about before, Switch input. All these you can come in here and just do, uh, you know, Bluetooth or native. You want to do that for the switch. Same thing, Bluetooth or wired. I believe you can hook the dongle up to the switch as well. I'm not 100%. Maybe you can't. I only use this on PC and I was able to get it to work on Xbox one time with the Brooks adapter, but then Xbox said, no, you can't do that and decided to not let me. Been in talks with Brooks, seeing if we can get an update for that dongle so we can get that back on the road. But anyways, you have plenty of connectivity types here. You're legitimately connected with all kinds of different devices and stuff. You just kind of got to play around with it and figure out which one works best for you. All right, so one thing I want to throw out there about this display for y'all real quick, is if you don't know, when it comes out the box, it does come out of the box in China. I am just so happened to be fluent in Chinese, so I understood the assignment and I've decided to help you guys out and read it off for you and you know go through the menu real quick so you would go to the fourth dot over to your live right yep one two three four hit a and then you'll come down this says language that's what that word says again i am fluent in chinese and that says language and then you can see here it says china right there and then the one next to it says english we're just simply going to click on english once you do that you'll be good to go you can just hold the home button and as you can see here everything is now in english for you other things you can do in the app itself is you can come in at a bu bu button map. That's all, folks. I think you can mess with the trigger modes. I'm going to show you that in the trigger section. Button edit is for your back buttons. I'm going to show you that. You can reset and you can also test as well. I'm not sure what that one does. I didn't really mess with it. Okay, you can test the buttons out to see what buttons work and all that good jazz. So that's actually pretty cool. Let's move over to the D-pad. Fly Diggity has a really good D-pad. I just, I love their D-pads on here and it's no different. It's on that rocker, it's on that dome-like, it's sitting there in the middle and it, it feels pretty good. I absolutely enjoy it, I love playing with it. All right, so let's talk about the face buttons on here for a second. This is what I wanna uh, talk to you guys about. Now, the buttons are not bad, so don't get me wrong when I say that, but they do have a little bit of a rock to them. You can just see they're kind of moving back and forth and stuff. You know, it's, it's not like it's causing an issue. Like, uh, they're not as tight and seated in there as they probably could be. And also the actuation, 
but there just seems to be a little bit of a traveling distance between the buttons and the uh the, the pads itself so that's not actuating i'm not actuating in there me pressing that in it's not actuating every single time i'm looking at the screen so i can make sure i'm getting it good and focused for y'all but you know it's not bad it's not like it's it, you know it's super noticeable or anything but i know someone's gonna probably mention it in the comments so i'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out there other than that though they are tactile buttons and they're the tactile uh, switches in them and stuff they do feel good i like them and you know other than the two little things that are on there moving on but yeah your other accessory buttons on here yourself you're starting you know you select and start home and your screenshot for nintendo switch and stuff like that these are um they work they're fine there's nothing special about them or anything some people don't like the button right there because when they're playing, they feel like they're going to hit that. I have personally never done that, so I don't, it doesn't bother me. It is what it is. Moving on. This fly diggity symbol right here is not a button, by the way. If you're curious and wondering, no, someone's going to ask. No, it's not a button. It's just a symbol. Lego, my ego. All right, the, button, the back of the controller does have four buttons on it, M1 through M4. You can program these on the controller itself, and they're super easy to do, and they feel good. They're ergonomically placed good to me. I've never had an issue myself playing with these. Let me see if I can get you in a shot here. I just kind of, you know, back and forth with my fingers while I'm holding the controller and I, I, they feel good, they feel comfortable. I'm not mad at them at all. All right, let's talk about the thumbsticks for a second. When we take about these thumbsticks, I'm gonna take this D-pad off. Like I told you, it can just snap off. And we're gonna take the actual base plate off because what I wanna show you guys and gals is something pretty freaking cool on this controller. One of the biggest things with the Elite controllers, I got one sitting right here, is you can take your stick off like so, and then you have a tensioner in there. You can tension, you know, tighten your sticks down and get a, you know, a tighter stick. Well, you can actually do that with this as well. Right here is your tensioning screw, and this is your tool. It actually is inside the controller. It's magnet. So as soon as you put it back in, it snaps into place. You don't have to worry about it falling out or coming out on or anything. And you legitimately just put it in there and screw down to tighten it and then screw up to untighten it. And I will tell you, there is a huge difference when it comes to the tightness on these sticks when you actually get it out of the box and tighten the screw all the way down. I, it's so much tighter and it just makes it so much easier to aim and stuff. You're not sweeping back and forth real fast and stuff. So if you're wondering, well, why would you want to, you know, tighten your stick down? It's so that you're, you're, you're a little bit more precise on your aiming and stuff like that. And that way you can actually take your sensitivity up a little bit and you're not like just flying all over the place because you have a little bit more control with, with that as well as maybe throwing some control freaks on here, which I'll talk about here in a second. Now, I do wanna talk about the sticks for a second because these are Hall Effect sticks. I reached out to Fly Diggity like I did the last few times I've done reviews for them. And I asked him, I said, hey, question, are these K-Silvers? We all know what K-Silvers are. We've all kind of had our experience with them and stuff, and a lot of people don't like them. Well, Fly Diggity messaged me back and actually said, no, they're not K-Silvers. They actually developed these Hall Effect sensors themselves. And I can actually kind of confirm that just from the software and going through the test that I've normally gone through. The center where the six sets is at a resting value of 000 or 0 0.0002, which I haven't seen on K-Silvers before, and especially a Fly Diggity controller. Now the circularity was still around an eight to 10%, if I remember correctly, it's on screen for you to see now. So that wasn't like where it should be, but there's definitely an improvement in their sticks, in my personal opinion, when it comes to just that. And I do like these sticks because they have them enclosed and encased in, so you don't have debris and stuff getting in here where the magnets are that can cause any kind of interference or any kind of like mess up where it's something can happen and you start noticing a little bit of stick drift and you got to blow it out or throw some BW100 in there and try to knock whatever debris might have fallen in there where the magnet and all that sits at to kind of you know make it make it better now is the high tensioning spring on these sticks gonna be better than the k silvers only time will tell these are brand new controllers if you've had this controller for since it's come out in china you were able to maybe get it on the website off of all you know whatever that website is that everybody likes to go to and pay less for their controllers but never have good customer service let me know in the comments below i am curious if you've had any trouble with your sticks or uh, they've been great. I've been using them. I've actually been loving the sticks on these controller. They are great. And then just in case you're curious, I loosen this stick all the way up and I tighten my aiming stick all the way down. So while we're on sticks and everything, I did want to show you that the control freaks, these are PlayStation 5 control freaks. They do go on here. Now I will say 
you are having to kind of push these on. And by the way, put your hollow, put your control freaks on like this while the sticks off the controller. Don't press down on the sensor and jam it on there and stuff while it's on the sensor because you're just gonna, you know, wear it out faster. I know these are hollow effect sensors and they're not supposed to wear out, but why I put stress on your controller or on your sensors when you don't have to? This does go on, you know, it's really tight and it goes on these are the ones i have that fit the place or the xboxes are too small and i don't have any other ones so just fyi just kind of work it in there it does go on it's just really really tight once you get it on you simply want to make sure your plate is on of course and then you'll put these sticks back on now these sticks only go on one way so if it doesn't go on the first time rotate it until you find the right the right pattern for this to go on and the d-pad is the same way it's only going to go on one way you have a big line right here going across and your d-pad's right there you'll just slide it over like so don't jam these in there guys because we don't want to break these so i almost forgot about going over trigger pull while editing this video i didn't realize i left it out so i want to pull it up here on screen for y'all real quick just so you can kind of see it um so right here this is your dongle you're at one millisecond so thousand hertz wired same thing thousand hertz and to be honest they're pretty much the same minimum and maximum so when it comes to consistency they're both pretty good um i don't have an issue with either one of them wired or wireless now the bad one here is going to be the bluetooth itself as you can see here you go from 13 to 1 to 13 to 1 you got a 29 in there bluetooth is like really really bad it's nowhere near stable in my personal opinion as in jumping back and forth you got a huge gap there uh but you know it, it, this is gonna be played for like cell phones and stuff like that so i'm not really worried about it but i just want to throw that out here i'm not going to try to overclock them or anything just because these the wired and the dongles at a thousand and that's the, that, that's all you can overclock even though you they say you can go higher now you can't so we're not even gonna try to overclock these and we're gonna leave them alone and get back to the video all right, so let's talk about the bumpers on the controller bumpers and triggers for a second here. So the bumpers on this particular controller, they're not loud, they're really soft to press and they almost sound a little hollow if I'm being honest with you, but they're not bad. They don't feel cheap, but they're not like, you know, they just sound kind of hollow. Now they do have the gripple on the bottom right here. As always, I wish they would just extend that gripple up here to the top. I'm not playing my controller like this. Bottom right here, you do have this gripple right here as well. And it goes across to the bottom right here. That's a little bit better. You know, I am holding my controller like this and stuff. It doesn't wrap around to the side right here. I'm not mad at it though. But these triggers are cool. They have their own special software they put in the triggers so that you can use, actually play with it. And I'm gonna actually show you guys and gals what they do right now just on the controller itself because I don't need to have it hooked up to the computer to show you. So if you come to button mapping and trigger mode, you can pick either left or right trigger. We're gonna pick the right trigger from here you can have normal. Normal, all that is, is it, it pulls in normal. Nothing there. It's just like an old analog stick. If you come to race and hit it, what happens is you have pressure behind it. It's like you pressing a gas pedal, right? You're pressing a gas pedal. You got some tension behind it, but you can press it all the way down. Pretty cool. It's cool for racing games. If you come to recoil and press the trigger in, you can see, hold on. You can see my finger legitimately recoiling. Like if you were playing a game and you wanted to be more realistic, kind of like adaptive triggers or something like on the PlayStation, that's pretty close to what they got there. And then vibration is legitimately, you pull it in and they vibrate. Now I am going to be honest with you, this worked for me when I pulled it out of the box. For some reason it hasn't worked since. I don't know if there's an update I need to do or something like that. I didn't really play with this. I just did it to test. And when I tested it again, it didn't work. Not 100%, I'm not really worried about it personally because I don't play with them on vibration. It could be just something in a setting on the computer itself that I need to look at. You do have sniper mode. And what sniper mode does is legitimately when you pull the trigger in, you have a stopping point. So like when you're sitting there and you're looking down your, your scope, you hold it right there. And then when you're ready to take the shot, you just pull. And then you have trigger locks. Now trigger locks simply is this. If you have it all the way up, like I have right here, there's no, there's Trigger stops is all the way at the bottom right there. It stops there. I can pull past it, but it, it, I can just stop there. If I turn it all the way to on, I have it stops there. 
Now you can set these sticks up however you want them. I personally just use them on trigger stops because I play a lot of FPS shooter games and stuff. The app does have certain games set up to where you can actually connect the controller to those games to get the adaptive triggers and all that in the game. Do I like these triggers? Yes. Do I like them better than the Fly Diggity Pro Vader Pro 3 controller? No. Personally, I like the tactile, clicky, mouse trigger triggers. That's just me. I'm not gonna dog these out because I think they're really cool. I think that Fly Diggity did something really, really cool here. I personally would like to see something like this integrated into this where I can tighten my triggers down or my thumbsticks down and have these tactile triggers and you know, still have everything else with the screen and setting everything up from the screen and stuff. I think that would be really, really cool personally. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think these, do you prefer these style triggers or do you prefer the tactile clicky triggers on the Beta Pro 3? And should I do a review comparison between the two? Okay then. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do out of the box is we're gonna just make sure that the, the controller is updated and we don't need to do anything like that. Software version update supports yep we need to go ahead and download that to support the apex 4 go ahead and get that downloaded that one percent will come back here in a second a quick word from our sponsor are you feeling lonely if so i got the perfect solution for you watch some anime back to you johnny we're, we're still only at 14 percent, 16 percent, 17 percent. we're not we're, take it away all righty then why it's updating guys this controller is truly pretty gorgeous let's see if i can get it oh slow down all right guys so here's the app itself you have a lot of things you can do from here i'm not going to go through everything but you can set up your mapping your joysticks motion sensor triggers and general which is your, your leds on your, your controller and stuff the rgb colors and all that good jazz from here you can also update it from here as well and you can switch controllers and everything else let's see controller version is it up to date i think we're good let me make sure trigger version all right let's go to a new trigger version you got all kind of updates for this controller You're freaking update nap updating the controller updating the triggers we'll probably update the sticks next i'm just i'm just super 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 excited to see what what comes of this update is it gonna give me hacks <laughs> you really need them someone suggested i get the coronas max to test controllers out with All right, so joysticks, the dead zones are actually set to zero. Look at there, look at there. All right, cool. So the joysticks are set to zero. We just did the, the test a second ago and they were all good. So that's very good to see. I'm super happy about that. All right, other things you can do in the app itself. Again, you can, uh, from your home, you can upgrade, do all that good stuff. You can take an ape, you can take a survey. They would love for you to take a survey. So you can do, uh, you can set up your buttons and stuff from here if you want. Um, you know, we're not gonna do that right this second. Now you do have configurations here on the side, which these are pretty much just like profiles, right? You can set these up to be whatever you want them for, which is pretty cool that it's already in there. And then you can actually from here, just to show you guys real quick, you can switch between the profiles by pressing uh, select plus A, B, Y, X. So wherever you have it on, you will just press and then you'll be good to go. Quick switch configuration, you turn it on to be able to do that by the way. So um, just wanted to throw that out there to you as well. We're not gonna go through the whole app and everything. All right, so wanted to hop on here real quick. Uh, I've already done this section, but I wanted to come on here because I told you I'd show you guys real quick. So come over here to screen settings if you wanna set up your fly diggity uh, screen itself. You will need to be wired for this to work, by the way, just FYI. You come here, you can see all the different ones you can add, but if you wanna add your own one, you can come here and just upload a JPEG. Uh, you know, PNG or a GIF itself like I did, and you'll be able to do it. Just keep in, si keep in mind the size need to be the, what they recommend the size being. So just FYI, you do need a cable, like it says, to hook it up, I don't have that. But I just wanted to show you this is where you would legitimately come and do that at. And then if you wanted to come here to adapt, to adaptive triggers to set up a game for it, you have all these games right here on the left side that are already compatible with the controller itself. You would just come in here, pick on, click on the game, turn adaptive mode on, all that good stuff, and you will be good to go. So 
I'm gonna throw those two things in here real quick as well. But at the end of the day, I have to say, I do like the controller. I think the Fly Daddy did a really good job on this controller. Personally, this will definitely be used in my setup a lot, I feel like, and I'm gonna enjoy it. I just hope and wish that they'll come out with something similar with the clicky triggers, with the mouse triggers, the tactile triggers, whatever you wanna call them, versus the triggers that are on this one, just kind of make a variant controller. I think that would probably go over well with the audience. If you think so, leave that comment below so that Fly Diggy will see it and maybe they'll get an idea from us, the viewers, and put it into practice. See you guys next time. Peace.